of the evening is sponsored by the Tennessee Army National Guard. It is in the Federal Division scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Introducing first, your fighter out of the My Golf Vacation Blue Corner. He weighed in at 144.4 pounds. He has a professional record of six wins with five losses. He represents Law School MMA out of Memphis, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Brandon the Gladiator Gator. And his opponent, fighting out of the Southern Roots Morgan Brothers Red Corner. He weighed in at 143.2 pounds. He holds a professional record of five or eight wins with five losses. He's representing Nashville MMA right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Zach Hicks. Well, it's an old Tennessee battle, but one guy's from Memphis, it's like four hours, and the other guy's quite literally right from Nashville. So you hear the pop, and now we're on your way. Zach Hicks on the underground, big fight field, no doubt about it. Hicks and Gator underway. It's almost amazing that these guys have never crossed paths at any other point in their career, considering as we talked about Monty, they've both been around a long time, they both fought really good guys, and it never seemed to come down to this very moment. So uh, the anticipation's been building up for years, and we finally got it. Absolutely, man. We get to see two skilled fighters, blue-collar MMA fighters, that have so many different skill sets to make them who they are, man. It's gonna be exciting to see this chess play, this chess game display itself. Gator feint in trying to draw out Hicks. We saw a moment ago partially landing a right hand. Hicks, as we talked about in the preview, is going to the leg kicks, but I think he's definitely worried about getting countered, throwing them early. So sizing up the different the distance, trying to measure his opponent, and then I would think Hicks at some point tries to close that distance and get him down. Absolutely. And Gators, again, he's got a lot of reach. Um, in this space, but he's throwing the long loopy kicks. He's not really getting tight in there So I wonder how that's going to play into how Zach approaches that Zach Hicks in great shape But getting a look at Gator seems like to have a slight size advantage. He just he's really Kind of a bit bigger it would seem than, than Hicks at least on the eye test Yeah, and actually Hicks was offered Arthur Cisse the guy we just saw at 155 pounds oh, wow. But you know he was very adamant that he wanted to stick to 145 He felt that was where he was his most competitive and then you run into these Brendan Gator types who are probably bigger than Arthur Cisse down a weight class. So yeah, that, that's a really good insight. I, I, I did not know that. Yeah, it's always amazing how some of these guys make weight because how much how much does Gator have to lose? Not much. And, and uh, Hicks goes in, grabs the single. He's trying to pull him down. This is great, great grappling. Hicks gets him down. Hicks takes him down. And uh, Hicks is in control. Hicks has got a really good ground top game. He does. Um, you know, Gator actually, he's a game. He comes from a, a school that he's going to be well able to counter this, but Zach Hicks will smother you if you let him get any top control. Looks like he's kind of working for a guillotine choke, but again, it's, it's hard to get any leverage when your back's lined up against the cage like that. So he can't accept the position. He needs to do what he's doing, create a base, and get back up to his feet. Zach's still holding on for that takedown. Yeah. He's not letting it go, and he's going. He's going for the leg control. It's a really intelligent top attack from Zach Hicks, and that's what we've seen when he has success here at these underground events and in the Aries Fight Series cage. He's just always a step ahead when it comes to the chess game on the ground. Absolutely, he's got to get his head out of there right now. He's got a, uh, Gator's got very long arms, so Zach's got to, there he goes. He's, he's got to pull his head out, there you go. Monty, you're absolutely right. He's got long arms, and that creates, it's a modified guillotine choke where he can change the grip on it and potentially catch Hicks, but, as Dylan talked about, Hicks is a savvy veteran. When he's on the ground, he's not looking to ground and pound. Beautiful leg he's, 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 he's looking for control. You're absolutely right. He's looking for control. He stays, stays as tight as he can. He gives you no space, no no space to really operate with, and then he sucks the life out of you. That's a tough psychological moment for Gator, too, because Hicks had basically let him get all the way up, it would seem, just to trip him down again after he climbed to his feet. And again, I think that savvy veteran move by Hicks is that who's working harder to get up? Gator. Gator's yeah. got to carry your weight. Gator, Gator's, ex, you know, using energy. Right he, there. Yeah, he finally technique. gets up, and you just drag him back down and make him do it all over again. And now Hicks has got the, uh, the top side. He's, he's going for him. He's got a, he's working on a choke. Gator's defending well. 
Hicks has got his back off the cage. Now, Gator was using the cage, using his back against the cage to get into position to try to get up the wall wall. And Zach is doing it now. Gator's got an open guard right now. I don't mind the open guard simply because he needs to work his way back up to his feet. And by closing his guard and trying to be, you know, defensive off his back is just going to neutralize Hicks and maybe kill some time. And, G and Gator's throwing a veteran savvy back shots with his legs, throwing those heel kicks. Uh, the, the Hicks is in the kidney area, man. And that's veteran move. That's veteran MMA right there. Yeah, Hicks is looking every bit of the minus 225 betting favorite courtesy of Pat MGM. Uh, that, that line, I thought, maybe a little wide. You know, I'm watching Gator, a lot of speed, and he still is going to have it here. You know, there's still two rounds to go, but... Um, Really, really good stuff from Zach Hicks. Exactly how you want the round to go. Yeah, that's exactly it. And he's not using a whole lot of energy. So it's not one of these situations where he's going to come out for the second round and the third round a little more labored. Is that he's done a very good job of banking around, taking one from the judges, and also come out, hopefully, and do the exact same thing for the next five minutes. The good news for Gator is second round will start on the feet. All of these rounds start on the feet. So he's going to get a reprieve here from the top control of Hicks in about 20 seconds. But... Yeah, another buzzer beater, perhaps. Could you imagine? And I will say one thing with Hicks, just one bit of criticism. He is actually such a nice guy that he doesn't throw elbows. I think it's partially like he doesn't really want to hurt the guy <laughs> as much as he just wants to beat his ass and win the fight. But it's when you're PFL, in close, that PFL got so his head. A little known no fact, a little known fact, Zach is actually a school teacher. Oh, so, yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, hey, class was in session there round one for Mr. Hicks. Is he uh, really good stuff there? Two cars out of the parking lot. Two. Really good round. Uh, Zach Hicks took that round. He controlled, he controlled uh, Gator on the ground. Gator's a game player, man. He was throwing shots from everywhere he was on the ground. He was fighting. There was never a minute that Gator was not fighting. Yeah, and again, for Gator, I mean, he obviously put a full training camp in. His coaches are some of the best coaches in, in the entire state. They're going to have a good game plan, but I think you would draw from the fact that Hicks, at points of his career, certain of his losses are third-round TKO losses. There are fights where he started off really good for the first 10 minutes and he used a whole lot of energy. And then in that third, when he's tired and he can't get the takedown, you got to chin check him. He's been finished a couple times in the third round, but again, we've been talking about it all night. I think he learned from those. And that's why you see him fight, not conservatively, but uh, meticulously. And not, not burning himself out so that he doesn't run into those situations again. That's very well said. That's a really good call, Cody. Uh, control, control the energy output so you get in dominant position before you do that. And he, he, he showed that. Round two back underway. Gator gonna look to stay standing here, and he's finding some nice, nice home for the hands here to start round two. I told you you called it. He came out for the chin check to see where he was. And Gator's definitely gonna be hot the early portion of this round because he just spent four minutes on his back, right? So he needs to get it back, but he also needs to get Hicks's respect. Come out hot and land something. You're not gonna win the fight off your back. This is where he's gonna have his best chance. He's just got to throw hot and uh, avoid that Hicks takedown when it eventually comes. He has faced similar adversity. Uh, winner of three of his last four, Gator has faced tough situations early in fights and persevered. No doubt about it. And again, this is a guy that's been around this scene for a long time. So if you look at early fights from him, he actually struggles with the grappling. He gives up a couple submission losses, we make a choke, arm bar. Nice takedown. And now nice he's got a very good grappler on top of him and Hicks, but he, he's largely able to neutralize. It's the takedown is the difference, right? The, the man on the top difference. is in control. Absolutely. And this time it's four minutes left in the round, not two. So we're going to see, you know, how Gator responds. Gator did come out on time with the chin check. Hicks just closed the distance and controlled the fight and got it to where he wanted it to be. And kids, if you're watching at home and you haven't done your homework yet, you're going to want to go ahead and get it done by Monday morning because Mr. Hicks is not playing around. <laughs> he is not playing around. No, he's, he's a hell of a t uh, school teacher. And I talked to him, I says, you must coach the wrestling program. Like, it's a no-brainer. You're, you're the coach of the wrestling team. He says, well, you know, I did, but I had to pass it off because I want to focus on fighting. is very, you know, selfish sport. you got to be at your best. He took a little time away to focus on him, focus on his skills. But he said... I agreed to come back. I'm going to jump on the Laugh House this season. I want to win this fight, and I'm going to coach the wrestling team. So he's always giving back. He's a really good guy. And there's, still, there's still eight minutes in this fight. Anything can happen. But so far, so good. You'd like to see it happen to Hicks, who is a consummate professional. Absolutely, man. Beautiful family, young man. Just a great guy. I really enjoy this matchup because we're getting to see a, a full display of two different types of fighters. Yeah. Um, and, and Zach's being able, at this moment, to, to offset um, offset every attack that Gator has for him. And, and very much Arthur Cisse, I think, was billed as the striker because of the bare knuckle boxing, and you got the wrestler in Pat Crumpton. This is a fight where you got Brandon Gator as an excellent striker, but he's got the wrestler in, in Zach Hicks. 
Nate Gaston, he's got pro Muay Thai and kickboxing experience. He's a nasty, nasty guy. Yeah. Andrew Stewart, we saw in his last fight, he's got that wrestling. I think it's like the great equalizer, and National MMA gives their guys that. they got such a talented room with guys that have wrestled collegiately, wrestled at the professional level, have been there, and it's rubbing off on them. It's definitely on full display here in the early going of our, our pro uh, card here on the main card of Nashville Underground. We had a big win earlier from Pat Crumpton. Now his campmate Zach Hicks having some success here through two in our second pro battle the evening. Zach's doing some impressive leg weave uh, moves to control Brandon. And Brandon is doing a lot to come from the bottom. He's using the cage. He's using every skill and weapon that he's got. But Zach has done really good at neutralizing every way he's tried to find to get out of this. Yeah, and when you're, when you're young, you've got this, 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 this thing, I want the full mount. I want to get on full mount. That's the most dominant position. Hicks is, looks for it there, but he's okay right here in half guard. Whereas Brandon Gage is 5'11". Zach Hicks 5'8". He has a much lower center of gravity. What you're seeing with Gator is he, he can't explode, create that space and move because he's got long legs. So by lacing one of them and stapling it to the mat, he's just got nowhere to go. Absolutely. You know, one thing you said earlier, Zach's not dropping elbows. His corner is screaming right now. You're in position. Use the elbows. They're right there. But it's like he respects Gator. And that's cool, right? But it is a fist fight at the end of the day. But, yeah, I mean, he, he, he could be doing some at least short shots to let the judges know. This is a 10-9. Everybody knows it. Yeah. But you could make it a 10-8 if you were uh, putting some serious ground and pounding as well. Absolutely. And the judges are, um, you know, unique in how they call. We don't know what they see. So you want to make sure they see what you need them to see. I, I think they're seeing complete one-way traffic from Hicks on top. Like, I, I mean, I would have to assume they're seeing that. But yeah, of course, they always say don't leave it in the hands yep. of the judges. I'll tell you what, I'm getting a look at Hicks' face right now in person, and it would seem that an elbow uh, from the bottom for Gator has opened up an abrasion over the left eye of Hicks. Absolutely, but Gator's been throwing from the bottom the whole time he's been fighting, man. The guy's non-stop machine moving. Even if he's not in dominant position, he's still fighting. And that's why it's important to throw those elbows. I mean, the guy just smashed you with one and cut you open. You could do the same thing to him. And he's in full mount, right? You see it's, it's chest to chest. There's not a whole lot of space there. Those punches, it's hard to weave it around. But a little level right here. Bam! There, there it is. He's right in front of our commentary position. He can hear. Zach Hicks, this is money right here. Elbow, elbow, oh. Has a lot of possibilities. But you see how the elbows open that up? It's opening them up to have to move. Excellent way to end the round. Yeah, that's some damaging stuff. And, and don't want to speak too soon here. The late submissions have been the order of the pro action, but really good stuff from Zach Hicks. They're going to clean that cut up, and Gator's going to have it in all likelihood down two rounds heading into the third. Yeah, well, they're going to need a uh, cut man mark to jump on there and, and, and just make sure that it's not one of those situations where you're up two easy rounds and the fight gets stopped on a cut. Oh, so, man, could you imagine? Yeah, that would be a terrible way to go out. So they got to make sure they stay on top of it, make sure the doctor's not coming in here. And again, for Hicks, when you're, at, when you're standing at range and you're striking, everyone's going to be able to see that cut. If you can get him down again, you mask it. We didn't even really notice he was bleeding until he got right in front of us. Literally in front of us, too. Probably no one else in the, in the room would have seen that. But the round ended, it's one-way traffic, it's a borderline 10-8, and as soon as the round ends, Brandon Gator jumps up right away, claps his hands together, and walks back. He's a man on a mission, he's got five minutes to turn his fortune around. Hicks, we, all we've been doing is singing his praises, and he's doing fantastic. But you can see the body language, he is working hard. Yeah, absolutely, man. And so it's five minutes for the buzzer beater, he's got to catch him. Absolutely, Brandon's got to keep this on the feet. Yes. He's got to stay on the feet. He's got the only way he can win this fight is a knockout or a submission. Um, and is where we are. Gator, Gator does look exactly how he did in the first round, though. He doesn't look to be, you know, he, obviously his, his heart rate's up now. He's been fighting hard for two rounds, but he's still there. He's got good energy levels. Dangerous fighter here in the third. And this is what he's going to do. He's going to go for broke because he's he needs go, to. He's going to go, yeah, absolutely. Goes for the chin check, but once again, um, he walks into, he gets into a position where Jack, Zach's going to rip his leg out and he's going to take him down. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hicks, Hicks is going to slide off the All top. All the blood though. and sweat at this point has created chaos in the grappling exchange. This, is, this doesn't look good. This is not a good spot. Brandon's going to want to try to get back to his feet. But, Zach, I'll tell you something. Like you said, wrestling is the great equalizer. Um, even men that are tired, man. Good wrestlers, they'll, they'll wrestle till there's nothing left. Yeah, and people would say, oh, well, you know, Brandon Gaynor might have been able to beat Zach Hicks in a boxing match. But this is not a boxing match. And a boxing match is not a true fight. This is a true fight. Brandon Gaynor's got excellent skills. But the, the higher you move up the mountain, the tougher the guys are. And the tougher the guys are, the more skills they have. And Hicks is just a fantastic wrestler. Not only that, he's at the stage of his career where he's finally putting it all together. And cool, calm, and collective. Absolutely, man. And here we are again with four minutes left. And he's in a position where 
You know, this, this is going to be a long round unless we get some position change. And we got to give we got to give David credit. He came out swinging for the fences. He knew what he had to do. Kudos to him. Yeah, he did just didn't accept. Oh well, I'll drop a decision here in this guy's hometown. He knew he needed the knockout and he went for it. So it's a risk reward. The the risk being if you get it. Fantastic. The reward would be if you got it. The risk being you could potentially leave yourself open to getting taken down. But the first two rounds, he got taken down regardless. So you might as well go for it. But Hicks is active enough that they're not going to stand you up. You're going to have to do it on your own. You see him building a base, but with three minutes, a little over three minutes, I mean, there's got to be a sense of urgency here because it, it, the moment is slipping away from him. Yeah, and, and this Hicks could, could do this for another couple of rounds too. You know, he's, he's very at home in this kind of fight where it's on the ground, stopping your get-ups. He's very good at staying one step ahead. And I would like to see him, you know, pedal to the metal here, try and stamp this victory with a finish, and I think he's got that in his mind. Yeah, as a fight fan, I'd say absolutely. Go and put that big exclamation point, show everybody you're back. As his coach, I would also say do it, but wait until there's about a minute left. He's he's two minutes and 45 seconds away from a win. I don't think anybody can disagree with that. So wait until there's a minute left and then unload the clip. And Go that, for it. I, yep. I agree because if you give it, Brandon's dangerous. And if, if he gets to the feet, he's going to be dangerous. If he had exerted himself there trying to get the finish and throwing a bunch of strikes, and now Gator's up, and now Gator separates, and you're tired and your hands are low, that's where you're going to make it. One more takedown, this is a Hicks win. Hicks doesn't get a takedown here. Gator's going to have that two minutes to make it happen. there's the takedown. Oh. He just, Hicks, has overwhelmed him, the grappling overwhelmed him. Brandon got back to his feet. Much kudos to him, man, for the hard work. Hicks has got an American wrestling style, but he almost wrestles like a Russian. Like, he loves those outside trips. Absolutely, and, man. But he's risk able to do his, yeah, and he just torques the body around, changes the position of the weight, and drags you to the ground. He doesn't have to shoot a blast double leg. He doesn't have to try something fancy. It, it, it's very effective. And we know Brandon Gator's a tough guy, but he's not been able to make any adjustments to that exact takedown that has been killing him all night. Hicks has obliged him. I don't have the official statistic on how many takedowns of this fight, but I, I feel like it's upwards of four now for Zach Hicks, who the wrestling has been on full display, and he will make this Nashville underground crowd go crazy here in about a minute and 30 seconds, unless he's able to find a finish. Yeah, I thought it was about five takedowns, maybe two in the first, one in the second, two in the third, but um, yeah, it's hard to say what's a takedown and what's just a mat return. He's, yeah. just, he's allowing you to get back up so we can toss you back to the ground. So. Absolutely. That's just, he's got a plan for the control, man. I'm, thir I'm thoroughly impressed. With the, with the game plan that was implemented by Hicks and his team. Um, they knew Gator was going to be good on the feet, so the whole game plan was close distance, close space, get him on the ground and just grind. And you see how what he's done. Yeah. And you see how effective it is. And, and again, if you're a kid at home watching right now and you've got your homework in by Monday morning and your parents will sign the permission slip, go join the wrestling team. <laughs> go this join is the who you want to yeah, This is who yes. you want to be learning from it. Proven, effective, and. Uh, solid performance from him. So yeah, the Nashville crowd will be very, very happy. And barring some crazy, because it's a man, anything can happen. Barring some crazy fluke in the next 40 seconds, uh, it looks like it'll be a 30-27 Zach And Brandon's working for, he's working for a triangle right now. He's trying to slip, he's trying to slip his leg in for a triangle, so Zach's got to be very careful right now, because a triangle, we, we've seen Anderson Silva come back and win a triangle at the end of a fight like this. So he's got to be very careful um, in his positioning, because Brandon, that's what he's working for on that eye. There you go. Now he's postured up, and he's, he's put back to a closed guard. So that's not, he doesn't have to worry about that now. Great, great grappling IQ by Hicks. Yeah, not only do you have to get the triangle on, you probably have to put him unconscious because Chael Sonnen, nah, maybe a bit of a quitter. Zach Hicks, no quit in him. No quit in him. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Fa no phantom tap here. <laughs> well, this is pretty much, this image is the tale of this one. It's been a really good performance from Zach Hicks with top control and round and mouth. In all likelihood, he's going to have some good news coming his way on the scorecard. Let him hear you, This really was a, a good get right spot for Zach Hicks, and it's great to see him back in the Nashville Underground uh, getting his hand raised. We, up next, it's uh, it's really starting to crescendo here. We do have our co main event of the evening. It is time for the pro debut of Andrew Stewie Stewart, who I know has a ton of support in the building. Opposite of him will be another pro fighter making his pro debut, Nate Gatson, out of Los Angeles, California. He did not come to Nashville, Tennessee to go home with a pro loss. I think he's got every design on playing spoiler here tonight. But the Nashville crowd making their voices heard in support of Zach Hicks. Just waiting on that scorecard to return to us. A lot of anticipation for the Colvin event, gentlemen. And after that, of course, it's Salsa King, Angel Alvarez, Dedrick Brinkham, Don Sanders closing the show here at the Underground. 
What a night it's been so far in the best two still to come. There's a little Zach Hicks right there, man. Ready for it? That's it. It's awesome to have your family on your side. Let's see what these referees say. I mean, the three blind mice you could probably get this one right, but it's no disrespect to Brendan Gator. It was just a flawless performance, and Zach Hicks and neutralizing him everywhere he could, so. Yeah, no, honestly, coming in here and facing Zach Hicks, uh, his skill level, uh, and taking it especially coming off of, uh, you know, that tough fight against Nate Kelly, you knew Zach was going to show the best version of himself, and that was certainly on full display here tonight. Monty, pretty good night for Nashville MMA so far. Absolutely, man. This has been <laughs> this has been a, a, a barn burning, a uh, wonderful night, man. I'll yes. tell you something. Brandon yes. doesn't even look tired. No, that's the thing. You know, I know, <laughs> I, I know he's really going to be regretting that he didn't accomplish more on the feet. But Zach Hicks really just put on a masterclass there for about 15 minutes. Looks like the tabulations are in. We are about to make this one official. We throw it now for the official results of this bout. To Jeff Hunt. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout went to a judge's scorecard. Your judge's score this bout 29 28, 30 27, and 30 27. All for your winner by unanimous decision. Out of the red corner, Zach Hughes!